everybody. I am so happy that you're here. I see tons of people already in the chats. I know that you're excited to talk with Emma. I am very excited to talk with Emma too. I'm going to bring her out here in just a minute. Let me take a quick glance at the comments. Hello, everybody. Please, when you come in um, to the video, whether you're here live or whether you're on the replay, just say hey, say hello. Um, let us know where you're from. And um, so I'm going to be bringing Emma on from Emma Cruises in just a minute. Now, I know that she needs no introduction. We all love her. But in case you're new to cruising or maybe you don't know Emma, uh, Emma is an award-winning cruise blogger from the UK and a cruise YouTuber. And I have to say a massive congratulations to Emma, to Emma because she has now reached over 80,000 YouTube subscribers. So bravo, Emma. And let's welcome Emma. We are going to talk all about cruising, and it's going to be tons of fun. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hello. Thank you so much for having me, and thank you for your congratulations. I can't think about the number 80,000. That's just, I can't. So thank it you very much. amazing. I mean, I know it's not about the numbers, but it is incredible, like, how impactful it is. Like, it really is. And you grew this while there was no cruising. Yes, <laughs> so. yes. I did. I started before the pandemic. When the pandemic hit, I thought, you know, what what do I do? It was kind of a pivot or give up kind of situation. So I moved kind of into the more cruise newsy space because before yeah. I would do ship tours, cabin tours, cruise reviews, which are very difficult to do when the cruise industry is closed. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I, like I, I know. And you did a really, really good job of it. Um, oh, I see a few questions. I'm going to come over to the questions in just a couple of minutes. Um, thank you for them. But uh, yeah, like I found the same thing when all of this happened. I thought, oh my gosh, what am I going to do to my content about what to do in Cozumel? You know, <laughs> as an example, yeah. I was like, or what to pack? I'm like, nobody is packing. Yeah, exactly the same. No one needs to know about what the drinks packages are or the dress codes or anything that we'd spent so long building up. But thankfully, everyone's coming back now. And all of that stuff is relevant again, which is so good. I know. It's so nice to see. <laughs> um, and there are new cruisers. So if you are a new cruiser and you're watching, uh, please let us know that you're a new cruiser. I've definitely started to see a lot of first time cruisers. And um, just a little something I see some people are doing it already. When you have a question for Emma or for me, please do um, put the question in capital, much easier to find it. So that is great. Um, are you okay, Emma, if we start with a question right away? Yeah, of course. Of course. I'm, cool. I'm just happy to be here, whatever whatever suits. All right. Let's see. Um, hmm. I didn't read this first. So uh, <laughs> thank you, Jim. <laughs> uh, Alana, as a Canadian cruiser, how does one determine how to properly choose a cruising expert as opposed to a travel agent who can book cruises? We live in the Prairie provinces. Okay, so um, kind of a quick answer, but um, there are people who work selling cruises um, that work on the internet. Like you don't have to go into somebody's actual physical office, especially nowadays, but they can help you um, online, like via their own website, uh, by email and over the phone. And um, in this case, probably I would choose somebody who is selling cruises in Canada because of a lot of the restrictions and you need to know about your insurance options. There's just now a lot of little details. And I do think that you want somebody who's really kind of well-informed. Uh, one company that you can use is Expedia Cruises. But of course, I'm not advocating for any agency in particular. But, you know, they do do a good job, I think. Hope that helped. Okay, let's see. So I'm going to take that away. And I really appreciate everybody always bearing with me because it's kind of <laughs> new to me. Still, StreamYard, it's my third live stream. So um, plus yours, so forth. Yeah, you're doing brilliantly. Live streams, are, <laughs> it's an interesting set of skills to do, to do a live stream. And you're doing so much better than I was on my third live stream. I look back oh, at mine. I look like I'm, I don't know, I look so bored. But I wasn't. It's just, you know, you have to get this kind of, live persona which you yeah you've, you've got it down already you're fine oh <laughs> you're sweet now hi guys i see so many people saying hi so hello hello thank you so much everybody who is here um thank you for the people that are reminding people to yeah do this please to the video it's much appreciated now even if you're watching the replay it's definitely going to be interesting because uh we're gonna pick emma's brain and uh, get all of her <laughs> and tricks okay um 
Emma, do you think that I can ask you a question about packing? You can. You definitely can. We may not agree on it, but you definitely can ask. No, but that's right. You're going to be the expert. I know you are the expert on packing in a carry-on bag for like mm -hmm. seven days. Yeah. Like, so yeah no, how, do no, how do you do that? Problem. So I think what a lot of people overpack is not necessarily the clothes, it's things like the shoes. Whereas I will only pack, you know, I'll pack one pair of heels for a cruise and I will pick a, a color that goes with all of my outfits and I'll try and pack, you know, a cardigan that goes with different things. Things like that, the accessories, when you keep adding them up, you can really pack, you can really end up with a lot of stuff in your suitcase. I, it's easier if you're going somewhere hot to pack light. If I'm doing, you know, a Caribbean cruise, shorts, uh, just throw loads in a suitcase is pretty easy. But I'm still kind of waiting to find out what everyone else is packing that I don't pack. Because sometimes I, you know, even if I'm doing a week cruise and I have a medium suitcase, I do not know what to put in there. I basically plan in my head, you know, oh, really? how, the, okay. how does a day go? What am I going to wear? An outfit for the day, an outfit for the evening. And I'm still... I still am wondering what everyone else is packing. Sometimes people pack things like pillows and coat hangers and, and all oh. that stuff. Yeah, which I would never even consider. But I, I, I'm kind of waiting to find out what everyone else is packing. <laughs> yeah. See, I don't... Um, um, guys, let us know what do you pack for your cruise? Like, what are some yeah. must-haves? Like, okay. I actually do bring a lot of shoes. I actually brought... Oh my gosh, it was on a nine day cruise. It was like our first nine day cruise. I think it was our fourth cruise. I um, counted the shoes and it was way too many for, yeah. there were 17. I know, I know. <laughs> and, and included flip flops and gym shoes, but that, I, I didn't wear them all. And I never brought 17 again. That was too many. And we did drive to the cruise. <laughs> well, I didn't, that was, yeah, that was, I, um, 17 wouldn't fit in my suitcase, even they if that was like, just 17 shoes. No, 17 but I had them like squished in different spots because flip flops. I think I probably had four of them were flip flops, two running shoes because I was uh -huh. like the gym shoes and there's like the shoes that you like to walk with. Ones, yeah. I was like, these are cute. These are all cute. <laughs> I, I don't do that anymore though. Now I'm I'm kind of though at probably like maybe seven. Yeah. I, I'm, I see Jessie comments that she brings sneakers, flip-flops, flats, and heels, and that's pretty much my four for every cruise. That's fine. A comfortable walking that. pair. That's the main thing. And then, yeah, one flats, yeah. one heels. We're good to go, pretty much. That is perfect, though. I think that that is enough. I like to have one extra pair in case, like, my feet feel swollen or I just don't feel comfortable. I like to um, I get that. Get around. Yeah. Uh, I see a question from Sunny Travels. What about the, oh, Emma, tell me about these. I've seen you talk about these before. Yeah. So Justin knows what he is talking about. He's, he's trying to make a joke because it's not a big globe light that, okay. you know. So I cruise in inside cabins all the time because they're really cheap. But one of the worst things is you when you wake up in an inside cabin and you don't know if it's 3 a.m., 3 p.m., your eyes kind of stink because you go from darkness to all the lights on. Yeah, absolutely. So I bring a lamp that's about, I don't know, it's this big, it's pretty, the size of my head maybe, it's pretty small, and it, you can set it to gradually get lighter over 20 minutes, over 30 minutes, it's probably the size of one pair of shoes, so I'm probably sacrificing one pair of shoes, and this is one thing that, you know, I don't need, but it really makes it better for the cruise, and they're so cheap, you can get one for like 20 pounds, I don't know how much it is, yeah. but so cheap, and it's just so much nicer, because you just feel awful when you wake up like suddenly in the dark with an yeah. alarm. I hate that. Yeah. So I will normally just set it for half an hour and then you kind of gradually wake up and it's, it's a nice like orangey sunrise and it's just good. I like them. <laughs> yeah. I've actually seen people, I think it might be on TikTok who've shown them, but I didn't think of bringing them for a cruise. It is a good yeah. idea. Yeah. Um, if you're in an inside cabin, definitely, definitely. Yeah. I'll probably bring the shoes, but yeah, <laughs> I'll stay with my lamp. And you can bring the shoes. <laughs> <laughs> um let's just get a couple of questions oh i wanted to ask you about virgin voyages mm -hmm. the cruise world thank you for this question good question um okay so what's the main difference you found in virgin okay. voyages i mean the biggest difference is now. that virgin have half their prices from what they initially were planning on charging half their prices which is a good way to <laughs> yeah, yeah. start yeah that's a good way to start um, I felt like when I went on, so I did like a, a travel agent kind of preview cruise just for a night at the start of 2020, right before everything 
it happens. Yeah. And on that, it was very much about we're such a different cruise line. Here are the drag queens. Here are the tattoo parlors. Here are all the things that make us different. We're not for traditional cruisers. We don't want anything to do with buffets or, you know, dress codes or anything traditional. And that was really what was promoted was the how different it is and all of these kind of gimmicky things like the um, adult activities that they have on the schedule and things like that. And they do have that stuff. That is all there. But I feel like they didn't mention just it's a good actual cruise. And if you're somebody who likes Royal Caribbean, you'd probably like the Virgin Cruise. It's not that different. So for me, it was kind of a different, you know, I got to experience all of the food, which was absolutely amazing. There's no specialty restaurants. All of the food is included. You get included soft drinks and um, it's all inclusive, but you, you pay for alcohol. And it's kind of just... I didn't expect it from what was advertised to me. I was like, "This is why didn't you tell me about this? This is a good thing. And it's it's really not that different from the other cruise lines. I know Virgin would never want me to say that, but it's just a kind of quirky alternative. Now that the price is the same as the other cruise lines, qu quirky alternative, that's how I see it. Yeah. I, I saw like some videos also about how good the food is. And I agree yeah. with you. Like from what I saw from so many people's first impressions um it seemed like oh gosh i don't think i'd like that at all yeah. whereas like, when i saw your video and i saw gary's video i was like oh this actually does look good like all of the different restaurants to try um yeah. on a scale of one to ten how would you have found the entertainment on virgin it was different so i'm quite i think i have quite traditional tastes maybe tastes that are a bit older than I am because I quite like the, the the musicals and the just sing along songs and that stuff that happens in yeah. the water usually twice an evening like I quite like that and on Virgin they don't have a traditional theatre so they don't have a traditional theatre team who kind of mm. do a different show each night it's more kind of like things would just happen like there would be events that don't have a location don't have a time you would just be sat in a bar and then something would happen um which was fine I think I'm more on the kind of traditional entertainment side, but I know, I, mean, I think it's going over to Miami next and I can see people cruising out of Miami. They're going to absolutely love all of that interactive kind of crazy entertainment. Cool. So I have one question also. Okay. Yeah. Get a tattoo. I didn't get a tattoo, <laughs> no, but the tattoo, it was, it was full the whole time. Like I never walked past and someone wasn't getting a tattoo there. So I kind of thought it was going to be a bit of a gimmick, but it seems like, people are getting tattoos on there, which yeah. Yeah, I just, I didn't cross my mind there's something to do on a cruise, but a lot of people it does. So why not? No, absolutely. But <laughs> very, very different. Mm. And <laughs> the last thing, uh, the amenities were different in the cabin. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know how much I could say on YouTube. I don't think your, your channel flagged as adult content or anything. No, like not at all. We're not going to. But, um, that, but go yeah. ahead over to Emma's channel and watch her <laughs> recent video I just, um, on her Virgin uh, Voyage experience. I mean, yeah. I think it's really part of fun. So it's it's on brand. But yeah. that's definitely not an amenity that I think you will see on um, on Princess. No, definitely <laughs> not. Definitely no other cruise line. No. <laughs> okay. Thanks so much for the comment. Um, how do I take that away again? Okay. Perfect. Um, I wanted to ask you um, about British Isles cruises, because I know so many people um, like ask about British Isles cruises and want to go on them, myself included, actually. Um, but I was wondering if you have like any tips, like, is there any good time to go weather wise? <laughs> I, get, I get asked this a lot. And I mean, right now, 2nd of September, this should be the height of summer here. It should be warm, but it is it is raining, it is drizzly. The best chance of sunshine you're going to have in July or August, but there's absolutely no guarantee. And the further you kind of go up, if you're going up to the top of Scotland, if you're going to Loch Ness, I don't know how many days of sunshine they get there in summer, but it doesn't seem like very many. So no. even if you were going in the middle of summer, you, you would still want to pack a coat. You would, you would definitely want to pack some comfortable walking shoes because you're going to do a lot of walking. But I like on the British Isles cruises, you can just wander off in every single place because you dock in the actual place and you can just go and oh, do your wow. own thing. So it's really easy if you wanted to, you know, go see something, get on a train, get a bus, just walk there. You're kind of in, in most of the city. So it's a really easy one to do. 
um, if you're kind of looking for a first cruise. I know a lot of people in the UK. So basically our summer season is just going round and around the UK. Yeah. Which is fine because it's so, it's so easy for us. But a lot of first time cruisers, this is their first experience. So I think it's, it's quite a, um, an e easy one to start with. Yeah. So it's definitely something that we want to do, actually, like to be yeah. able to start off in um, one London to visit and then go over to uh, Southampton. Are there any must do's in any of the different like any? Um, I know it's a silly thing to, to say because there's. Yeah, well, there's <laughs> it's not a silly thing to say. I just mean. <laughs> the, they tend to go to the same kind of places. So most British Isles cruisers will go to Liverpool. You'll probably do something Beatles related in Liverpool. I did because you're in Liverpool. Yeah. That's kind of what you do. Um, most of them go to places like Belfast and you can do the Titanic Museum or you can do a Game oh, wow. of Thrones tour and they go up to Loch Ness and you can find the Loch Ness Monster and Giant's Causeway and all of these different things. But it tends to be the same kind of, we don't have that many ports that can handle the big cruise ships so most of the itineraries are the same kind of i don't know 10 maximum ports around the uk yeah but very cool though because when you're yeah, coming really to cool. america like i'm i'm in canada so for us british isles is like a very i mean maybe exotic is not the right <laughs> word but really like a very very interesting itinerary like it's like a bucket list itinerary for me yeah I mean, well, even for me, I've been doing British Isles cruises this summer because it's easy and I can. And I've been to places I'd never been to Liverpool before until I went on a cruise because why would I just drive up the country? I would normally fly, you know, down to the Mediterranean or something. But it's been really yeah. nice to just explore places that are, that are close to me. And I've never, never thought about them before. And there's so much, you know, history and culture and you can just you don't have to try to find things to do. If you go, just go for a walk, you'll just find stuff oh. everywhere. <laughs> that, that sounds so good. Um, now we had a question, and I see that actually Hope is here. I actually wrote it down as well. But um, what shore excursion companies then do you recommend as an alternative to cruise company cruise company sure. uh, excursions? I don't usually book. You know, I know you, there's so many companies where you can book excursions that are almost the same as the cruise line but they're a bit cheaper. I don't usually use those ones. What I will do is I will look at the cruise lines excursions, get ideas, work out what is around, what everyone's going to see. Then I will book directly tickets with, you know, if I'm in Norway and I want to go on a train or something, I'll find that. I will book the train tickets and I'll work out how to get there. And I tend to just create my own excursions because it's often so easy to do. And I've been on cruises before where, you know, I've been with my friends and they've gone on an excursion to a place, they've paid the cruise line however much money to take them there. I've just wandered off and I've walked right past it and seen the prices outside of like half of what the cruise line's charged. So if you just do your research kind of ahead of time, if there's certain things you wanna see, you can usually you know, pay with your credit card before you even get there and it's cheaper and it's, I think it's fun. I think you see more when you just go for a walk or when you get on a kind of local train rather than being on that bus with all of the other cruise people. Yeah, yeah. I think especially when you have a long enough time to explore. Mm -hmm. um, I know what I do also is um, I'll actually like look it up on Cruise Critic or I'll like watch other people's cruise videos, like their yeah. vlog to see what they've done. And then I'll do the same thing. Either I'll look for what tour company they used if I think I want a package tour, because sometimes I do, like especially mm -hmm. easy, yeah. um, depending on where we are. Yeah. Um, and if there's a language barrier for me, I like to... Um, have Makes things sense. a little bit organized, but mm -hmm. um, but on TripAdvisor, oftentimes I'll find ideas and then I go look them up. And when we can, we also uh, kind of DIY. Even in the Caribbean, we take a cab over to the beach. Like we're fine with that as long as I have enough time. And I always come back two hours before. Yeah, I'm exactly the same. It's it's not. It's not. I couldn't enjoy that extra time if I was there because I'd be so stressed about having to get back. So not worth it. Absolutely. Um, I'm going to go through some of the questions. Um, okay, please help Jesse Bean. Does anybody have any favorite compression bag brands? I don't. I have to test out a few. So I'm not going to answer this, but help Jesse Bean in the comments, please. Um, ooh, John has a very practical question. <laughs> Coke um, on Virgin. Coke, I think, and I much prefer Pepsi. So <laughs> I think it was Coke. Yeah, it was Coke. It was from, it was, you know, fountain soda. So it could be anything but Coke. Yeah. Oh, 
uh, let's go through this one. Southampton next summer Ooh. for Cruise, Isle of Wight or Bath. Oh, Ooh, both brilliant. I would pick the Isle of Wight because I haven't been back there for a long time and it's it's adorable. It's a tiny, tiny little island. You get the ferry over to the Isle of Wight. Mm -hmm. But Bath is equally amazing. So many nice places to see. Um, I don't know how I could pick one of them for you. Both great options. So, yeah. yeah. I have friends. I think I've told you, Emma, before, but um, I have friends that they're Canadian and they mm -hmm. have like their roots in Scotland, I believe. And so they love to go back. Like, usually they would do like two Cunard cruises a year. They would fly yeah. over to London and then they would take uh, the Queen Mary to back. Nice. And they love going to, um, to Isle of Wight. That's like one of their favorite things. Yeah. I'd yeah. like to go back, yeah. <laughs> that where Briggerton was filmed? Is that what I can remember? Okay. Another. <laughs> so, <laughs> <little> trivia. <laughs> yes. Oh, awesome comments, everybody. Uh, oh, okay. I love to talk must-haves for um, interior cruise cabins, and mm -hmm. you book interior cruise cabins a lot. So oh, yeah. what do you think that people really need for an interior cruise cabin? I think I've already given away mine, which is my my favorite daylight lamp for the inside cabins. I don't bring any of these magnets, whiteboards, all of these things. I see everyone bringing extra storage. I don't bring any of that stuff. The only thing I will bring is my clothes and my cameras and my chargers. I don't bring any kind of organizational stuff. The cabins are designed, you know, most most of them have enough storage in them. Most of them are designed for your stuff, but I don't I don't bring any any kind of secret things. Ah, uh, okay. I tend to bring magnets. Like I just found, I didn't I know this for a long time. Many people do, but yeah, because I add the extra hooks. But and um, then I started to use packing cubes, and I really like those. Cubes, yeah. um, I haven't used uh, like the portable light. I know a lot of people love them, but I just use. I leave the cabin door open a, a little bit, so mm -hmm. it's for me. Or sometimes I leave the TV on so I can see the bridge in the morning time. Um, but um, I don't usually use anything else other than that. I think I never bring hangers, but I ask for extra hangers all the time. Oh, okay. okay. I never need them because I never, you know, I don't have much stuff because I'm packed so light. So all good. <laughs> I do have a tip though for anybody who is, especially if people are cruising with children and if they're well, inside cabin or not inside cabin, but I have a friend, she brings the over the door organizer and she pre-packs it at home. So she oh. puts it packed in her suitcase like yeah. with her sunscreen and her children's like hair ties any of the different things and she feels like with kids it really is handy as an organization system that's kind of hanging that her husband can plop things out of it yeah packs it in advance which i think is brilliant i think i would just leave certain things in there things like you know adapters or travel wash just you're not going to need them at home so just leave it wherever you're packing yeah absolutely um Okay, I have to ask you a British thing. Is that okay? okay? Of course. Oh, what no. is your favorite British food? My favorite British food, is that the question? Yes. Yeah. Go, Yorkshire pudding, hands down, no question about it. Absolutely. So what is I, that? I always struggle to describe Yorkshire pudding. Okay. <laughs> the actual, what it's made from is basically a pancake. It's basically like a big fluffy pancake, but you, oh, okay. if you don't have it with sweet things. You have it usually with a roast dinner. So you'd have it with gravy, roast potatoes, and it's just, imagine just like a little nice pancake and you can put things in it and you put sausages in it. And it's just, it's just so good. Yorkshire puddings. You can get it's giant so ones. Savory. Brilliant. Yeah. The best. I didn't best. know. I thought it was like, um, like, um, like, no, and then <laughs> like with a rice pudding in it or something. Nah. Maybe, no. or maybe like fruit pie. Yeah. <laughs> no. no, I know so many people who've tried to find Yorkshire puddings and they're looking in the dessert because they think it's a pudding and you'll never find it there. You need to find, oh. you know, roast beef or roast chicken or something and you'll probably find Yorkshire puddings near that. <laughs> so do you go, like, I know you sail with Princess sometimes. Do you mm -hmm. go to their British pub lunch sometimes? Yeah, sometimes. Um, I guess so. Does sometimes if you British do. Because I've met some people who are like, that doesn't taste British. I'm like, I'm like, yeah. for me, I'm like, it's fish and chips, <laughs> really good. There's prawns, you know, like I would call shrimp normally, but. Yeah, I think it's more, you know, the things on the menu that they have taken them from the things that would be in a British pub, but they're still, you know, they'll cook things differently and, and stuff. It's not, it's not, it's never a true, you know, British. Yeah, British, yeah. But. So it's always good, and that's, that's the main thing. doesn't matter. 
Yeah. Well, we love it because it's at least something different to eat for lunch and like an experience. One more question about British food, the flake bar. You guys have chocolate flake, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like people love that flake. Yeah. I like, I like a flake, but it's, it's very messy. You have to be prepared to eat the flake because otherwise you'll get chocolate pieces everywhere because it's just it's just flakes of chocolate that are held together until you bite it and then it falls apart. But yeah, we have so, so many types of chocolate that you guys just don't have. And I mention them all the time and that's how I find out um, what no one else has. Yeah, because you have the orange chocolate also. Chocolate orange, yes. Love yes. a chocolate orange. That's really. nice. Yeah. I didn't realize that everyone else didn't have chocolate oranges and yeah. No. Yeah, with the best chocolate. If anybody is Canadian um, that is watching, let me know what is a food that we have that you don't think other people have. I think it might be Smarties. Um, I know that, I think, I don't know if Whippets are also Canadian or not, but those are so good. I don't know what that is. <laughs> oh, are Whippets American or Canadian? Guys, help me out here. <laughs> let me know. All right, we've got some packing questions. Folding, rolling? Uh, probably a bit of both. Probably if it's t-shirts and shorts, I'll fold them. If it's dresses, I will roll them. Exactly. That, that was good. <laughs> my, my technique. And I take my dresses, like sometimes I put five all on top of one another and I yeah. roll them all together. Yeah. <laughs> In between stuff, so. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, Dawn, we are different in our, um, in our first style. <laughs> But a lot of things are the same, but yeah, yeah, definitely some differences. That's, that's the beauty of cruising. Yeah, it's, right? it's useful, if anything. <laughs> no, you don't want to be everyone be the same. It'll be so boring. Absolutely. So it's Whippets, W-H-I-P-P-E-T-S. And they are these um, chocolate um, cookies with marshmallow on the top of it. So sort of like a half moon shaped marshmallow. Oh, and the bottom is a Graham base. Um, and the entire cookie then is covered with dark chocolate, I think is the original. And then you can have like a light chocolate or sometimes they have some strawberry in it, but it's basically like a marshmallow cookie. It's really good. That sounds so good. <laughs> Who needs that? <laughs> All right, so now we have a lot of things that are just Canadian. <laughs> Smoked meat in Canada, yes. Oh. Yeah. What I don't know this. exactly? It's like a brisket. It's beef, so it's like um like a salted meat. It's actually not my favorite, but my husband and most other people absolutely love smoked meat. I'm also one of those weird people who doesn't like bacon. I don't like salt, salty foods that much. Oh, that that is a moon pie. I didn't know it was a moon pie. But, so over nice pie. Yes, on beaver tails. Sorry. Do you, do you see a comment? Yeah, I just saw Tristan says that that's a tea cake in England. I know what a tea cake is. If that's the same thing, oh, that's fantastic. Okay. Love well, a tea cake. Well, we live the next time. <laughs> I'm going to show them. That and maple. They're, they're, they're only this. They're quite small. They're like this big. Yeah. yeah. And they're yeah. Like, oh, yes. that's fabulous. Brilliant. Okay, so, so good. I call them Whippets here, but I guess it's just the company that made them. Yeah, that's the, the, the company. And people eat them and like, we love those cookies. Mm, that sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> um let's see pardon me okay i'm just seeing oh uh, let's see oh nanamo bars yeah probably i'm gonna get really hungry if we keep doing this nanamo bars are i think they come from i guess it's is it nanamo is that the location in bc those are really good those are like coconut chocolate bars mm -hmm that are really good. Oh, Smarties are in South Africa. Oh, very interesting things. My favorite is actually bagels though, but Montreal bagels. <laughs> Not bagels, I know we can start a fight on that, but um, that is my favorite. Final answer. <laughs> yeah, so I have a few questions for Emma, mm -hmm. but I thought it would be fun if we all play, if that's okay. So it's sure. this, or that cruise edition, edition, okay? So in the comments, you say your answer, but we're gonna, it's like a, a lightning round. Okay, Emma? Uh -huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yep. we have 10 of them. Main dining room or buffet? Main dining room, okay. I think, but uh, both. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and guys, let me know your comments in the, um, your answers too. Inside cabin or balcony, most of the time? 
inside cabin all the way definitely yeah that's good good value yeah love it okay caribbean cruise or alaska um i'll pick alaska please both of them seem very far away at the minute but i would love to get back to alaska i went when i was 11 but oh, that's wow. yeah it was amazing but i was 11 i think yeah. i'd have it now. it's time um, to get back caribbean is great but you know I've, I've done it a couple of times and alaska would be nice so yeah, yeah absolutely stairs or elevator always the stairs if it's less than 10 flights i take the stairs that's my rule for myself yeah um, i just never i just you wait around for ages everyone's crammed in there i just i'll walk <laughs> yeah i do the same thing actually a couple of times we've usually like at nighttime i might still take the elevator yeah we'll have a couple of times if it's just a couple of flights because i'm wearing heels at nighttime so yeah, exactly. i've actually taken my heels off in my hands and i've just run up if the elevator line is you know too long yeah sometimes i go up and along <laughs> and then up and along and then you know so that it's not 10 straight flights but yeah always walk all right pizza or chocolate lava cake Oh, chocolate lava cake. Definitely. Wow. Yes. Loves pizza too. But yeah. Yeah. That's a hard one. Yeah. Okay. River or ocean cruise? Oh, I'd like to keep both, but if I if I could only do one, one. <laughs> is if I have to get rid of one and I could only keep one forever. It's, it's get, I'm gonna have to keep yeah. ocean cruising. But river cruising is so good too. But yeah. there's a lot more ocean. So. Yeah. People sometimes ask me about river cruises like in my facebook community or whatever and i always mm -hmm. do them towards your videos uh, it's definitely a cruise that i want to do in the future. yeah it's good it's it's very different i don't even think that i thought there would be you know i went on this river cruise and i thought there would be crossover between the ocean cruises and the river cruises but they're totally different most of them had never done an, an ocean cruise and never wanted to. And they looked at those huge ships and thought, oh, I'd never want to do that. Mm -hmm. And then everyone on the huge ships says, oh, I'd be bored on the river ships. Like, it doesn't really cross over that much. Oh, that's interesting. But both, yeah, both good. Oh, I'll have to go on one and then we'll chat. Yeah, definitely. Um, okay. This one could be controversial. I'm looking at everybody's comments. Oh, gosh. Yes. Um, this one is a little bit controversial. Not super controversial, though, but a little bit. Okay. Um, QR code or paper menu? QR code, hands Whoa. down. If we could do that for everything, if we could ideally, I could just order the food on there and it will come to me. I would do everything on my phone. I love it. This is one of my favorite, you know, changes since coronavirus. And if we can just keep it, definitely QR, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's like we have like a restaurant, we haven't been going out much, but we have a restaurant that's near us and they have a QR code now rather than a paper menu. Yeah. Like, oh, this is pretty practical. I see the pictures of the food right in front of me. It's mm -hmm. not like as bad as I thought it would be. I, I really actually wasn't looking forward to that, but it's actually yeah. To be honest, I mean, there are places here way before pandemic where you would order your food on your phone. And I've always liked that. So it wasn't too much of a, of a shock. If anyone here is from the UK and is um, used to going to Weatherspoons and always ordering your food to you from your phone, it's oh, just, okay. just like that on cruise ships now. Usual, yeah. I never, I had never seen it before or like up until the pandemic. Yeah. But maybe it's just where I was going. Yeah. Okay. You get one thing free. Wi-Fi or beverage package? Beverage package. It's a bit <laughs> tricky because obviously I have this, you know, the in the internet now, but usually if I didn't have a cruise channel and cruise social accounts, I would I would definitely never pay for the Wi-Fi because it's quite nice not to have the Wi-Fi. I I've always, you know, I'm always in contact with everyone through email. To have them, you cannot be contacted for a week or even a few days, it's really nice. So yeah, beverage package for sure. Yeah, it's funny because um, I think people are surprised also, like even for me, I actually would prefer like I love social media and I love to, to do this. Mm -hmm. But like I loved cruising as a vacation. So I don't want to lose that like by going on cruises and vlogging the whole thing or, or yeah. being on social media all the time engaging with people. I feel like I would lose out on just being there and the enjoyment of cruising and why I, I even started to like want to share about it. Mm -hmm. so, um, but of course I want to use Wi-Fi. Yeah. I, but I can break from Wi-Fi during the day. Like I'm just like, oh, it's fine. Like 
Yeah. I feel like, I mean, most of the cruises I've done recently would be, you know, closer to home, like in Europe and around the UK. And I can use my phone when I'm in port anyway. So yeah. to have a day or two, maybe sea days without Wi-Fi, that's fine. Yeah. Nice. Oh, a lot of people agreed that they are yeah. disconnecting. Good. Yeah. Um, but it is good. It's true for checking on flights and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. All right. I said it was a lightning round, so I'll go quicker. Big or small ship? Big. Why not? If you had a choice, beach or sightseeing? Sightseeing every time. Oh, cool. So that was interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm not against the beach, but I just get bored really quickly. So, yeah, I don't want to be someone who lays down for a week in the same kind of place. No interest to me. Yeah. If you, um, I know you said that you've like uh, been to the Caribbean before. Do you have like a port that you particularly really enjoy? Like whether like. Yeah. To be honest, when I have taken Caribbean cruises, it's been because, you know, I'm already in the US, the flights were cheap and it's cheaper to go on a cruise than stay in a hotel. I never really went on any of those Caribbean cruises to go to Cozumel or any of those places and I didn't do any of the you know I see people do all of these like adrenaline filled I didn't do any of that stuff so I'm I don't feel like I'm qualified to um comment because I didn't I I just had the all-inclusive drinks and I just I pretty much stayed on the ship <laughs> oh okay but you had fun <laughs> no, I mean, it was so good I mean we get off and wander around and have a look at things but I never did any of the the things you have to kind of plan in, in advance I was just having a good time so yeah, I see a lot of people actually are agreeing with you uh, for the sightseeing. And of course, some people are more beach. I'm probably more beach when I'm Caribbean. And then I like sightseeing when we've been in Europe. Although yeah. some of the uh, the ports in um, in the Caribbean, like we were in St. Lucia in uh, January. And That's like, nice. yeah, I always wanted to go uh, to St. Lucia. But like since I was a child, like I think I would see the, uh, the Twin Pythons and I really wanted to... Um, to go anyway but it was as nice as I thought it would be like it's yeah. actually an island I would consider going back to because it was just anyway just extremely beautiful and that we did a tour and we did the uh, volcanic mud bass and that was very nice that sounds yeah I think it may be different if I had been there but the, the ones I've done are the um you know the Belize and Honduras and the the, the very kind of man-made Oh, yeah. Then it's like you get off the ship to go to a pool and a man. Be yeah. yeah, that's like pretty much party. how it was. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm just going to look through lots of people. People um, agree, which is good. Yes. Oh, now this is interesting. I I haven't done. I sometimes would keep the um the planners for souvenirs but the paper for souvenirs for menus i hadn't really thought of doing that i uh, personally i wouldn't want to look at food that i can't have anymore as a souvenir that would just depress me i think more than anything um and i you know when you have a cruise business and a website and you have you have pictures of every menu so it's, it's not really the same yeah um, absolutely yeah. so I'm looking through for any questions that we didn't answer yet. So let me know your questions, guys, for Emma, and we'll get to a few of those. I'm looking back. I can't really see too far back. So if I missed your question, then please let me know. It's so nice for me to be on the other side of the live stream and not have to find the questions. As much as I love it, it's quite yeah sometimes to hold a conversation and read at the same time it's, it's really tricky <laughs> so you do you're doing great but yeah I'm <laughs> <on> this side. <laughs> um so uh jen you're doing your first cruise in october any advice in bermuda um have you been to bermuda i have been to bermuda okay. um I, it was just strange for us because it was wandering around and being like, oh, that's very British. That's very British. And it was like like a strange parallel kind of warm uh, place. It was cool. I think we went to Marks and Spencer's and, and yeah, I, I, I don't. I don't think I have any particular Bermuda, Bermuda specific advice. I think it's quite an easy one to go to. If you want to just wander around, you can do that by yourself. Yeah, I agree. We um, 
actually funny about um, Marks and Spencers because when we go to Bermuda, we've been seven times. So, wow. it, but I think maybe because um, it's like got a Caribbean feel and then it also has this British feel and it feels yeah. comfortable as Canadians too. People are so polite. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Bus drivers are so polite. You get on, they're like, good day. You look good day to you. It's just so nice. And um, mm. It was a nice place. Definitely like to go back. Just, just bizarre for for me, you know, to see a uh, Marks and Spencers in the sunshine rather than at home. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, we used to have Marks and Spencers here, um, like locally mm -hmm. nearby, and they closed like at least twenty years ago. It might even be thirty. It's a long time ago. And we used to eat these amazing cookies from mm -hmm. Marks and Spencers. I don't know. There's probably more than one. They're kind of <laughs> like um, they're not shortbread. Oatmeal. They're oatmeal yeah. with um, a, a light um, milk chocolate top. I think they might be available in dark chocolate too, but the milk chocolate is the best. And you have humbugs. Mm -hmm. Do you yeah. know the humbugs? Okay. So when we go to Bermuda, we bring it back for uh, oh, okay. Uh, and like people who remember Marks and Spencer, and then we serve it all. We're like, oh, look, because we didn't yeah. have to, to get it. And yeah. yeah. Oh, cool. So, yeah, I just remember how expensive things were in there compared to, you know, a normal one, but different. Yeah, but for <laughs> us, it would be like imported stuff in Canada. So yeah, would anyway, I would never buy the clothes at Marks and Spencer's. <laughs> well, like in Bermuda in particular, it was so expensive for yeah. them. It didn't look like they should be. Um, I'm just looking through and I hope I didn't miss any questions. Oh, this is cool. so um Emma I have never been on a Belgian cruise but I okay. know I have I have done two and they're brilliant because you can just wander off it's probably going to be raining and you're going to do a tour of the history and the culture and the streets and it's so good I did a uh, bike tour in Tallinn and it was raining so badly that they I mean, they came to us and said, do you want a refund? It's raining so badly. And we were like, no, of course not. We're British. We used to the rain. It's raining in the rain? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. No. It, was, it was, you know, to the point where the color would come off your socks. When we finally got back after this, like, five-hour bike tour in the rain, it was freezing. But it was, it was absolutely amazing. It was really fun. But, if, I mean, if you're doing a Baltic cruise, you need to go to St. Petersburg. If you, do, you, you have to. I think that's the, the place to visit because it is the most bizarre place I've ever been it's so interesting but it's it's I I can't describe it until you go to Russia for yourself um you've just got to do that you do pretty much have to do an organized excursion either with the cruise line or certain companies do excursions but there's visas that they'll work out for you so you can't just wander off in Russia but you wouldn't be able to read anything or do anything anyway so you kind of need to be on on that tour but D definitely if you can do one that stays over in St. Petersburg and do two days there I would do that we had two days on my Morella cruise in St. Petersburg and we just did like um two different excursions on the different days it was very good oh that's awesome oh Emma I um, I was meaning to um let me just take that away thank you I was meaning to ask you actually, and I don't know if everybody knows that um, you have a course on actually cruising and cruising for less, so really saving money on a cruise, um, and honestly, much more. Um, for people who don't know, um, I've gone through Emma's entire course, and I think, is it 16 videos that you have? Something like that, yeah. I keep adding to it, so it's probably a bit more now, but yeah. There is a lot, and honestly, <laughs> surprised me. It does have a lot, actually, honestly, of amazing tips and strategies for cruising for less, like uncommon things. Um, mm -hmm. Not just the tips and tricks that we all share on YouTube, like really uncommon tips. But beyond that, there is so much cruise advice that's um, like super, super useful. Like, do you have anything you can share about it a little bit more? Yeah, so I did see someone in the comments said that they were taking my course and it was great. And thank you so much oh, to whoever you were. Um, awesome. I, lo I lost I lost it, the comment, but someone said that. So thank you so much. But basically, I created this course for everyone who is confused and overwhelmed and stressed. Because, I mean, between you and me, we have 
how, how many hundreds of YouTube videos, how many hundreds of blog posts full of interesting information that you need to know. But if you're somebody who's taking your first cruise, your fifth cruise, you want to know just what you need, just the facts, just what you need to know. So I created a course that goes through, you know, all of the mainstream cruise lines from uh, the US, from Britain, from Europe, how to find the right one, where they go, when is the best time to go, when is the best time to book it, how to book it, how to go on the cruise. And the kind of overall idea of it is how to do it on a budget because I cruise, I can cruise pretty cheaply. That's that's what I like to do. But it's good though, right? Because then when you spend money on that, you can spend more money whether on the things that are important to you. Mm -hmm. I mean, for me, I would much prefer to do you know, a two week cruise, because I've managed to do it at a good time. And I've got a good price. And I've booked this kind of slightly different cabin, if I could do two weeks, because I've done that versus a week, just because I saw it and booked, I think I think it's a no brainer. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm going to leave for anybody, even if you're, you're watching it in the replay or whatever, I'm going to leave in the description of the video, I think it's there already. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm going to leave the um, the link for the course for people that are watching or anybody who um, is ever on like Lifeball Cruise. Like this is just always a code. Uh, you get 10% off. Thank mm -hmm. you, Emma. That, that, is, that is the only off. discount code that exists. This is the only place where you will get that discount. And I, I, I'm, I'm not planning to do any other ones. This is it. This is you. You have it. <laughs> So thank you so much. I really welcome. That. So <laughs> it is um in the description below. If you want to kind of just check out further, then you'll get more information uh, there yeah. as well. Oh, this is so nice. Emma's course rocks. I thank you, John. It, it it's really so works. it's so nice for me because. I mean, YouTube is fantastic. Having a website is fantastic. But if you're going to say I want to tell someone a tip on YouTube, you have to, you can't just tell someone the tip or that's like 20 seconds. So for me to have the course, every time I learn something new, I can just, I can just add it in there. And I just, there's no fluff. There's no drama. It's just everything I know in one place. It's a video course. So you go through the videos, there's downloads, there's checklists, there's everything you could need in one place, which there's so much information on the internet. So it's so nice to have it all together. Yeah. And you don't have to watch like hours and hours and hours of no. things <laughs> that are fun and entertaining. But yeah. It's all in one place and you can even get organized and go through it. So yeah. Like, can you imagine if we said to someone, oh, well, you want to learn how to cruise, watch every video on both of our channels. It would, you would, you, you could never do that, could you? Like you would never get to the end. <laughs> so. no, no. And it wouldn't be current necessarily either. Mm -mm. Nope or relevant absolutely um, yeah a lot, a lot of it would be news wouldn't it to be fair from the last year and coronavirus stuff which hopefully will be irrelevant soon no you're welcome <laughs> yes, i hope so you're welcome jesse very B. welcome um i'm just looking to see what other questions we have we have another few minutes of it 10 more minutes with emma so if you have some questions for emma um then make sure to ask them try to put question at the beginning because that's super helpful um i keep hearing about formal nights our first cruise with ncl to the caribbean we <laughs> did not have a, what is this but um mm -hmm. that that is uh good that you are a norwegian cruise line then because uh, yeah. there are no formal nights on norwegian yeah. cruise line. you picked the one cruise line that <laughs> has no formal nights no anything i mean basically a formal nights are just a dress code for the main dining room normally most cruise lines have kind of moved away from it being a formal dress code that you have to adhere to and it's more of a oh this is wear your best clothes celebrity chic dress to impress you know it's a, a suggestion of you're on this cruise if you want to dress up you want to wear something nice this is is the night to do it some cruise lines have more strict formal nights than others on some you have you have to wear certain things if you're not dressed you will not be allowed into the main dining room but most of them now if you're you know wearing something nice and clean <laughs> you're normally fine but not not nothing like that on norwegian at all that's the only cruise line i think that has no dress coats at all yeah we actually liked it when we were on norwegian there was um one night i think it was called norwegian night out so it was absolutely mm -hmm. not enforced like there was somebody in shorts um, yeah, which was fine but like I was a little more dressed up but I wasn't in a cocktail dress like I won't bring like I, I won't bring like super fancy 
on Norwegian, but I definitely, I like to wear dresses, so it doesn't, um, it doesn't bother me, but it's also nice to be able to just kind of dress more casually too. Yeah, this is the type of thing, as we were just talking about my course, but this is the type of thing where in my course I have every cruise line listed from most formal to least formal, because it's so useful to know that if you're someone who, you know, you've cruised with Princess and you really like it and you're looking for something kind of similar, I have everything in a list for Jessie. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, especially because the atmosphere and the vibe is so important, right? Like if mm -hmm. you're in Norwegian and then you go on Cunard, not, yeah. um, I know that do, happened to you. Yeah, Jesse, do not feel silly. It does. No one explains this stuff to you, and it really annoys me when the cruise lines just expect. How do they expect people to know things if it's your first cruise? Yeah, do not feel silly. No silly questions. Yes, absolutely, no silly questions. And yeah, Helen, uh, formal night is generally tuck suit, cocktail dress, and operative. Yeah, definitely. For some of the cruise lines, it, it absolutely um, is. Um, looking. Oh, I need to update Emma's course link. It, it just redirects. So, no so that's problem. okay. As long as it links to the right place, I think it's important. Click through. And <laughs> it just redirects. It's all it'll good. Be, yeah, it'll be fine. I loved that name of your website, by the way. I, <laughs> I loved, loved it too. It's I, not not a practical name, though, or a business. It was very long. I yeah. So I... I started my website and for those of you who don't know I named it cruising isn't just for old people .com, which is great more of a tagline than the actual business name I think and typing in that URL for four years I still couldn't do it right the first time so as my YouTube grew my YouTube was Emma Cruises I decided to change my website to emmacruises.com just so that it would be the same thing I still agree of course cruising isn't just for old people but uh now this is my poor business. It kind of needs to be a bit more of a business name. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And it is like on online, it is easier than um, Google. It was, it was very long, <laughs> very long. Absolutely. But still a great name. Um, hi there, everybody. I'm just looking. Uh, nice. Oh, John says that it doesn't yeah. redirect. If it does not redirect... If you okay. go if you go on emmacruises.com, there's a big button that says how to cruise for less. And if you go on there and then enter the discount code, it will still be it will still be linked. So Okay, so work. make sure, yeah, that's another thing too. If you want that discount, just um mm -hmm. put in Life Well Cruised on uh, Emma's channel. Even if you don't use the link in this video, if you go on it later, just uh put life well cruised. Yeah, that that's sh that should still link up to you. I, I hope. I hope. Um, pleasure. You're very welcome. <laughs> okay, I am looking to see if I had any other questions for Emma because I know some people did ask me some questions in advance, and I want to make sure that we get everybody's. Um, oh, do you have any tips, Emma, on embarking, like in terms of a difference, like instead of embarking, let's say from the US for a Caribbean cruise, mm -hmm. if you're embarking uh, for like, I don't know, whether it's a British Isles cruise, or maybe in particular, I think Asia was. Uh, yeah, was um, there's not, I mean, I've done cruises from the US, and I've done cruises from the UK and cruises in Europe, and there's not a huge real difference in embarkation, probably the difference would be how you would be getting to those ports it seems to me like most people in the US drive to the port most people here will either drive or get the train so if you're using public transport if you're in somewhere like you're in Rome and you need to get to Civitavecchia and it says it's an hour on the train give it two or three hours just be be a bit more prepared if you're doing it like that yeah do you take the train over then to uh to sometimes I'll take the train yeah um some, sometimes it's cheaper to get the train than park. So sometimes I'll take the train, but yeah. Ah, okay. It, it depends who you, if it's just me, it'll be cheaper to get the train normally. If I'm going with a group, you might as well go in a car. <laughs> yeah. My parents actually took the train in uh, Chivitavecchia because, well, from Rome, because they just didn't want to pay like the exorbitant prices yeah. for the show. But it was an adventure, they told me. Oh, so, yeah. No, I, I had one, one, um, not ideal train trip back from Rome. It, we took the local train rather than the the direct one. Ah, it was so busy. Oh, Everyone was shouting at each other, and we was there was nowhere to start. It was yeah. That was maybe when I had budget cruised too much, <laughs> too far. Oh okay. <laughs> um, 
Well, hello, Gainer Latisse. <laughs> so you Hi, have a <laughs> Hi. Which cruise are you most looking forward to? I think the one I'm, well, I have booked a Disney cruise and I am really looking forward to it because I'm just so interested. Oh, yeah. So I've, people ask me about Disney cruises all the time, but being a budget cruiser, Disney cruise is very, very difficult. Disney cruises are quite expensive. Yes. But Sure. We have one of the ships here this summer. So I thought as the Disney ship has come to me, this is not going to happen again. They very rarely cruise over our side. They're normally from the US. I thought this was my chance. So I have booked a short Disney cruise and I'm just so interested in it from a cruise kind of perspective rather than a Disney lover perspective. Yeah. Not that I don't love Disney, but I am seeing it from the cruise side. Is this worth double, triple the price of a Royal Caribbean cruise, a Norwegian cruise? I don't know yet, but I'm interested to find out. Yeah, I heard the food is really good. And like the idea of the restaurants and the way they work. And I heard the entertainment is amazing. But you I have to say, so, when I yeah. was young, I went on Royal Caribbean partially because of the price. Because mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. Royal Caribbean I thought was so amazing. And uh, the price was a lot less. And I had boys, so... I don't know. Maybe it doesn't. I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm sure it will be great, but is it going to be doubly as good as, you know, princess or celebrity or something more mainstream? I don't know, but I will know soon. So, so we'll watch our videos. Yeah. Um, sorry, Linda. Uh, yes, I'm just going to point this out. I have a free packing list when you subscribe. I'll put that in um, uh, for anybody who's interested. If you want to subscribe to my newsletter, it does come out twice a week. So I kind of let you know when the videos are coming out and different things that are happening. And um, you get a free packing list if you want. You can unsubscribe after if you don't want to, uh, to subscribe. But I think my newsletters are fun. So subscribe. You should I'll put yeah. the link in the, uh, <laughs> in the, um, the description. Aw, that's very kind. <laughs> so, Thanks, Jim. I'm sure it would be fun to, uh, to meet Emma in person. We've never met in person. Uh, yeah, that, that's, that's really strange to me. I feel like I know you. I'm the same, I hope, <laughs> in real life. <laughs> I'm sure you are. Okay, we've got one more thing. What is the Britishism? British okay, Britishism. I, I, I made that up. It's not a word, so there's no way to say it wrong. Um, uh, so I saw some comments earlier about my Britishism because what I do is when I kind of publish a video, I do it unlisted and I'll share it, you know, with my patrons, my parents, make sure they check it. And oh, so my, nice. my they've already seen the one that is coming out today and the oh. one for today is fancy dress do you say fancy dress would you say a fancy dress party in canada because they don't say it in america no, no. I, we might say like i might just be like oh you know you can kind of dress fancy but we no. don't know <laughs> fancy like like costumes do yeah you know fancy costumes yeah lou's got it there yeah so it's like a Halloween party would be a Halloween fancy dress party. Or if you dress up as an animal, we dress up as a person, we would say that's fancy dress. You'd have a fancy dress shop. It doesn't mean like it's fancy. It fancy no. is, is, is co costume party, I guess other people would say. But that's that's my Britishism of the, the day, I think. That <laughs> but, uh, I, I remember there was actually, just for two seconds, yeah. on, um, I remember about three years ago, there was a big fight that erupted and- Yes, this, this is what my next video is about. Oh. This is, <laughs> okay, I'm going to watch Emma's video. It's going um, live after this. <laughs> okay, and I will let people know that if you're watching this, make sure that you watch the video that on my channel came out yesterday. It is about the 10 most annoying and sometimes ridiculous <laughs> things that cruise passengers do. Some bad behaviors that if you're new to cruising, you should be warned about. It's not that mm -hmm. bad. And if you're an avid cruiser, you uh, probably will agree with that. Yeah, you probably will know. Yeah, don't be that, don't be that person. Okay, so Emma, I know people know you, but still for anybody who's maybe new to cruising, who hasn't, doesn't know where to find you, where can people find you? Well, I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone in the chat and for you for having me on this live stream, because this has been so much fun. Oh, and you. so, so many names I recognize in the chat and lovely people. So thank you for, for joining us. I keep things easy with my social accounts. Everything is called Emma Cruises. My YouTube channel is called Emma Cruises. My website is called emmacruises.com. And all of my information about my course and everything is emmacruises.com. Just keeping it easy. But yeah, thank you so much to everyone for uh, watching it yeah and i mean subscribe and comment and like and all of that stuff 
Yes. Well, thank you. And, and thank you, everybody, for being here live. Um, really, really appreciate it. Um, we'll definitely do more lives. And um, it is a lot of fun uh, connecting with you, uh, Emma. Thank you so much, everybody. And uh, I think that we'll, uh, we'll end now because it is one o'clock. But I appreciate it so much that you guys are uh, all here. Bye-bye. Bye, 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 bye for everyone. now.